Okay, hello everybody, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 post collector incursion thing. So, I did a bit of exploring. Um, let's see, we are currently in the Calston Rift. I was kind of going to ones that I had 0%. The Shadow Sea was only one system, so that was easy to do. Um, not done with the DBA, but I did finish the Minus Wasteland and got a mission from there. Um, the local cluster, too. Um, but I believe uh, the system we are in. I'm not gonna do the Firewalker thing, but we do have a reactivate magnetic shield mission. And excavate resources. Apparently there's an inactive mech down on this planet that we can mess with. I don't really know. But we're gonna land. Just to check it out. I feel like this is a good idea too, like with like a, if you let your romance, I feel like in Mass Effect it's easier to not, your decisions aren't as affected by your companions or your romance because they don't, it's like they're an approval or disapproval thing, you know, you get, the, you can get their loyalty or you don't, you know, but, yeah. So, but with Thane, it's like, oh, he's probably cool that, you know, of everything. Whoa, we're in a very humid place. I did not realize. You better wear a breathing mask, Thane. I'm not. I'm detecting a large supply of resources buried deep within the canyon walls. Heavy explosives will be required to excavate them. I don't really need anything, but... I'd hear good money for this useless heap of blah blah blah. Nah, but Mary leaked the aura. Right, I said, sure, the thing leaks people like a volus. Wow. like Thane would approve of, of this. Like, not this. Actually, this probably not, but going around trying to help people. Like, I feel like, and I feel like Shepard in a way feels like she can maybe get more done. Done maybe outside the alliance for now for actually helping people and I because I feel like maybe a part of her is a small part of her is hoping a very small part is hoping that the reaper threat won't that she could she wishes she could just ignore it too you know but so for now she's gonna focus on helping people and in a way it's gonna hopefully be making it so that people so that they'll be more prepared, you know what I mean? When things actually go down. Maybe she can, like, get them ready now, sort of, is how she might be kind of trying to justify it, but... I don't know how I feel about this. It's kind of weird. Yes, hello? Oh, hey! Shepard just kind of... Well, this is a pretty cool looking place, even if I think it's kind of a bit odd. Uh, 
like that we're working this hard for resources when I could just scan them. You poor abandoned mech. That is would be just kind of funny. It's like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> Well, I don't know, it said to do it, you know? Like, just like, well, why, I guess, why not? It's here, why not do it? These two, they look similar in a way, I don't know. And maybe it's the, well, I think he's carrying the assault rifle, yeah, but I don't know. Like they, they would get along perhaps better than anybody else in the crew just because they wouldn't have to say anything. And they're both snipers, you know? Like, in a way, like, they would understand each other perhaps better than a lot of other people would. Like, than a lot of other people trying to get along with, uh... You gonna punch it or something? Just fire a rocket out. Well, what the heck? Ow! I was not expecting that. Jeez. Resources. Uh. Well, at least we get a cutscene. Hey, this is Shepard saving up for the coming battle. Still get Cerberus funding. Hey, <laughs> uh, somehow Edie, Edie's keeping it on the down low. Maybe. This is fun. To just wander around. Doing good. Saving the galaxy in little ways. You know. And it leaves it wide open for, like, your own, like, personal interpretation of how things are going. Like, are we, like, is everybody just hanging out? Like, what's going on, you know? Not just the romance, even though that's exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but this, and as much as I wish, and as much as Shepard wishes that we could just do this forever, like... That's not how it works. You know, it'd be kind of cool as if, like, you, if he was, like, looking at, like, my books and, like, my frog and, oh my gosh, we should feed the fish. Squeak. I introduced him to frog. I will check my mail. Nope, I did not mean to check the upgrades. Just, like, hang out. It doesn't have to be, like, all sexy times. It's just... Again, he looks so <laughs> like if she was sitting right there and he was sitting like that, that'd be fine. Otherwise, it's a little bit weird. But yeah, if she was just like sitting right there, like looking at him, maybe, but not maybe like overly flirty, like oh hi, because that would just be kind of weird too. But <laughs> it looks like he's already looking at somebody sitting there. You know what I mean? And he's like got his legs crossed and everything. I wonder does Garrus does Gar does this happen with like Garrus and Jack and Miranda? Does everybody sit like this? <laughs> Cause that's kind of awesome. <laughs> or if it's unique to Thane, that'd be nice. But it would make sense if they uh, just had. Why does there? I just noticed. Why does there have to be an outline around his crotch? Like, why does his uniform have to have that? <laughs> Uh, that's a little weird. But I do know, I read in the art book, I don't know if I mentioned it, his shirt is actually designed to be that way. No, no, it was in the, it's in the art book, but it's also in the Shadow Broker thing. I think in the medical analysis, he's supposed to leave his chest bare, like, like, just like a, a, par a portion of it, that, like, somehow helps. But I'm like, 
pretty sure that's medically not viable. I'm pretty sure that's not actually a thing. We just did it because it looks sexy and why not? But it is, it almost looks like he cut it out because it looks like he left the collar in. Like that's, I don't think that's his skin, you know? Not that I've ever seen him without his clothes on, so I wouldn't know. But Shepard would. <laughs> It just looks so happy and comfortable. Why can't things be like that forever? Ah! I really, oh, I like really want to kind of start Mass Effect Three just just to see how it goes. But at the same time, I really just want them to be happy forever, forever. And I'm probably, this is, a, this is the second time I've come back to play this Shepard. I'll probably never, I don't think I'll ever play her again, probably. You know? Like in Mass Effect 2. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there will be a day when I just, I'm like, freaking, I want to play the Thane romance. And, like, I come back and I do it again. Because I have a thing where, like, I don't like to, once I have a character paired off with another character, I don't usually make new ones to romance that character because it feels weird. I don't know. So. But it's like, this is like, th th like this laying here, like they're both aware. Maybe she doesn't even, she, she's kind of blinking. So maybe she's just trying to relax and like he's there like to kind of take a little pressure off of her shoulders, you know, like he's relaxing but not quite asleep. But like, they both know that this can only be for a moment, you know? But they're enjoying it while they can. Freaking having a sexy hot drill man on my couch. Like, I can... I'm not complaining. Zero complaints from me. Indeedio. This is nice. See, this gives me a reason to kind of stop, come back and relax on the ship for a bit. We're taking our, like, week-long vacation. Which isn't as long as we would like. Because it's a funny thing, because we're like, oh... We're thinking about the end of the mission. We're like, oh, it'd be nice to have a vacation. But, like, when you actually think about it, and I just, I just thought about this just now, there's no vacation. Because right after this, Shepard's supposed to jump right into, like, looking... Like, fighting the Reapers, basically. You know? Because they're coming. It's not that one. Uh, where is it? I don't remember. But... That fact that they were, like, talking about it was, like, you know, either A, they thought it wasn't going to actually happen, sort of. Like, they were kind of hoping it would and, like, thinking like it would, but they were also kind of thinking that maybe it might not, you know? Um, but, was it? No, it's the little one. Malfunction detected in colony's magnetic shield. Shield must be reactivated to avoid exposing colony to unstable activity and potential annihilation. Um, let me see, it was, it was the moon of Sinma Surter. Yeah. Uh, oh, the other, the star, the, the moon is used to observe this planet because it has, like, no atmosphere. I think. I think that's this one. I don't know, the interesting about the vacation thing is that, like, you know, either they thought it wasn't gonna, kind of, kind of were, were hoping and thinking like it was gonna happen, but kind of felt like it wouldn't, that they were not gonna make it out, or they were acting, oh, not that was right. Oh yeah, we have to wear helmets. Got to turn it back on. There's solar radiation. All right, or that freaking. They thought they would come back, and they were like, it was almost like a dream thing. We're like, if we do, we'll like, we'll take a vacation, but then not quite realizing that there's more to do afterwards. Almost like hoping beyond hope that they could have this like vacation time or whatever. And then when they finally get to that point, they're like, oh, wait, we don't really, we can't really do that, can we? Like, we have other obligations that we have to do. But, or it's just like, you know, screw it, we're having a vacation, the Reapers are coming, but we're going to enjoy this moment while we can. I think, I don't know. Is it going to burn us like that, like, like that one? 
So, whoa, hey now, whoa. Oh, by the way, there was a there was a a planet called Kobayashi, and I was like, oh, it's the Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> Why are you broken? Somebody sabotaged you. This is really cool though. Like, freaking this reminds me of that Star Wars in the clouds and freaking Cloud Nine that I can't. <laughs> yeah? Uh, why, why are you freaking out? Am I gonna get shot? I feel like I'm, I'm gonna get shot. or was it shield generator cooling unit shield control uh, okay I will uh, do the shield control should I activate the cooling unit okay. there's like freaking floating freaking solar arrays that's really cool look at this oh my gosh Wow, like, look at it's a desert thing! They ate it's a desert! Oh, there's a control switch. Where is everyone? Where did they go? Did they not come with me? Control switch isn't working. What? Oh. Okay, okay. I think I did it there. Maybe. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe just turned on the coolant. cannot be activated because the generator is offline. So... Put it over here. Oh, okay. Weren't they with me when I got off the shuttle? Oh no, their little faces aren't down next to me. Okay. And now we'll put power anything that's funny I feel like stuff like that would like be like a, a, in the next game it would be like you know oh my gosh like you you did this and such and such and such it'd be interesting if I could like get all the missions done except for Firewalker on this and see if it see what kind of differences it made in the next game in the Mass Effect 3 in the Mass Effect 3 the Mass Effect 3 not Mass Effect 3 I've been playing this all day and I don't even care I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't even care. Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna go upstairs. <laughs> See, this is the thing though. I wouldn't, I would be doing this if I wasn't recording. So I'm gonna be doing it as a record, even though it's like, okay, it's taking some time. Like, even for me, I'm like, okay. But I want this to feel relaxed. Like the last couple of missions when I, after we did all this, I was like, oh, it's feeling a little bit rushed. 
Like, I feel like I'm, like, rushing. And that makes sense. But maybe she was. Maybe she was kind of rushing, kind of trying to maybe avoid at least a little bit. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Kind of, like, uh, trying to avoid the responsibilities that come with. Uh, nope. I can't. Okay. This was enough. Let's go lay down. <laughs> but not avoiding the responsibilities. Just kind of trying to, like segue them sort of almost where she's like you know oh, we'll do this this is important we need to do this whereas like you probably should focus on the reapers but but she is and she will but she's human you know but maybe she she was kind of just rushing around doing these other little things kind of trying to prep for the reapers and kind of take a break from reaper related things and Thane was like okay let's take a little break let's calm down i like that i like that can't even handle how freaking beautiful they are. These two people that I love greatly. Oh, man. Oh, it's, my heart's already breaking. My heart's already breaking. I don't know if I'm, like, mentally ready enough to play Mass Effect 3 again because the beginning is very traumatic for me. <laughs> recognize this from Mass Effect 3 I actually think there was one of the a thumbnail somewhere was actually this uh, nebula so I don't remember which, which episode it was <laughs> but I do specifically remember this nebula I didn't remember the name but the Kallistan Rift sounds familiar and Bal actually out of all of them Balor and Solveig sound familiar but um Oh, it's like 82. Well, let's see. Ismar, Frontier. Let's do the Frontier, yeah. Let's just do some Frontier stuff. Aquila! I remember this one. I remember going Aquila, Aquila. Ooh, look, it's, uh, it's old grave sites. Obviously humanoid, but incomplete and poorly preserved, which made them difficult to identify. Fragments of primitive ceramic grave kids were also found nearby. This raises the question further questions about who once traveled this inhospitable planet since the closest garden world of has no intelligent life. Human universities are planning for their annual observations! Ah! Nothing? Ah, I was hoping for a thing. I wanted to land on it. Oh. Cool though. Well, that's the Ismar Frontier. Um, Shrike Abyssal. I, I hesitate to jump into the Shrike Abyssal because I'm pretty sure that one is massive. It's huge. Zicha. I do remember this one though. Zeta Ban. Yep, yep, yep. I remember. I remember the name. I don't remember exact stuff. Oh, this one's called Dos Atab, which means Sky Warden in a Volus language. Warden, cause Mass Effect. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, Dragon Age. <laughs> oh, Strike of was not as big as I thought it was. All right. There might be more later, eventually. And like the like the one, what was it? The Kalistan Rift, I think, was, was that one or the other one, was only showed up because we got a mission to go to it. Ishma, Minos Wasteland, Eagle Nebula. Oh, that was. This is the Crescent Nebula, which is. Uh, yeah, 82. Okay. Oh, I have more than I thought explored, really. Cursor to fly by an automated probe in 1874. R1874? Nice. Like human 1874? 
I love reading the I love reading the text in this stuff on all the planets. Six hundred and twenty people on this many. <laughs> Everything makes everything go considerably quicker. I'm just reading the fluff text and maybe trying to find a quest or two or a mission or two. I'm just overawed by like the amount of creativity and like scientific know-how they have to have to do this. Like you can bet they did a whole bunch of research before making this. Rough Tide. It's the name. Police and the drill enforcers clashed with Krogan and Fortune in an ugly series of race riots in the late 2170s, and the planet has only grudgingly kept a shaky peace since then. Is this is this a hand? Because I noticed this this I, I came here because this system is named Relic, Murky Water. Huh. Well, okay, let's let's read. This is probably the main habitable planet. Fitful current was so named because it orbits in retrograde, indicating that it may have been an extrasolar extra solar planet that was captured by the relic system's gravity well. Large for rock planet, fitful current. Hanar Robo Miner. So we're in like the Hanar place now. That's interesting. I don't. I mean, in Mass Effect 3, you do kind of hit everybody's home worlds a little bit, but. Nothing? Murky water. Its name is a literal translation from the original Hanar. We would consider murky water a sign of danger. Hmm, so it's just a dangerous planet. Very pretty looking, though. First land. Uh, this is interesting. I don't. I don't remember any of these planets from Mass Effect Three. And that's where I remember most of them from. I spent I think the most time in that one. For some, like just each planet, each system. I don't know, I did a Mass Effect 1, 2, and it probably just kind of piled up, like, you know, like, I, just from Mass Effect 1, and then reading a little bit of Mass Effect 2, and then into Mass Effect 3. I guess Mass Effect, well, I don't know. All of it, it all goes together in my head. Home to many space stations, a thriving community of Drell and Hanar make their homes in orbit here, giving the soldiers in Robomar somewhere to go, and the 50-hour day and nights are driving them mad. It's very pretty. I like that green. Greenish yellow, kind of. It's pretty. Island Wind. Named as for the sweet smelling land breezes that come off the archipelagos of Kahe, Kaje in the evening. Oh my gosh, is this their home planet? Oh my gosh, is it really? Like their home planet is called Island Wind, but Kaje is like the continent? Oh my gosh, is this freaking. This is their home. This is the freaking drill. I mean, Hanar. It'd be cool if you could find the uh, Drell homeworld and visit it. Praying mouth. It's a ship killing and Nick. Wow, it's really pretty. There are many theories why ships never return from their undetectable space debris, old destructive torpedoes, and magnetic mines from a long forgotten war, even miniature black holes. <laughs> huh. Nothing there. Interesting. Beach Thunder. Lives and dies on the price of titanium. <laughs> it follows the Hanar and Drill Robo Miners competing with Krogan and Borgia, who simply put on environment suits and lays the titanium out more or less by hand. As the novel's promotional screed says, accidents are frequent, rivalry is fierce, and vengeance served up fast. I guess, yeah. Krogan and Borcha are pretty hardy. The Drill are hardier than the Hannah are, but still. They're not impervious to harm, kind of like the Krogan and Borcha are. Amun. Interesting. A 
anomaly detected. Ah, uh, cool. Cool and dry. Nick has a nice connection. The vast salt flats, which were warm enough for liquid water. During the Honor Rebellions, Nace was a distinction ground for eclipse ships, which was the site of their first defeat when enemy Nahist, Nahist surprised and routed them with superior force. Some wreckage from the battle can still be found today. Translation error. Status of system operator is not known. General distress. Beacon process interrupted. Translation error. Status of system operator. Something on our sensors. Surface scan indicate a wreckage of a merchant freighter. Configuration unknown. Damage tip catastrophic. Detecting movement, but no signs of organic life. <laughs> and Horus. It seems like the habitable planet of the area. Whoa. Heavy Gardamor with heavy populations of humans and Batarians? Anhur was home to one of the ugliest violations of sapient rights in modern human history, a consortium of corporations and corporate politicians fearing Batarian economic competition due to their custom legal slavery, passed a resolution that abolished the minimum wage, effectively re-legalizing slavery on a human-dominated world. Opponents of the motion quickly turned to ad activism and violence. Well, frick yeah. Uh, civil war. Just one side sought to end slavery by the system, and another, primarily Batarian faction called the Nahist, sought to keep the slaves they had. The Anher rebellions raged from a uh, significant advantage in, advantage in ships, labor, and weapons, forcing the Anher militias to hire mercenary companies to even the odds. In the end, the abolitionists won out, even though, uh, though at the cost of much of their infrastructure. But today, on her today, still has significant natural wealth. It's like, it is economically depressed, save for the reconstruction industry. Sounds like the American Civil War, basically. Exactly. <laughs> wow. That is a massive gas giant that is right next to the sun. Oh, yeah, because it's Amun and Sekhmet. Okay, I remember. Yep, I remember this one now. Site of important battle. With the fire ring, they suffer very weird. Hmm. So the Eclipse mercenaries weren't, like, I mean, they were helping try to free slaves. Basically. People who were facing. I can't believe the Alliance was, like, chill with that. Like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's whatever, I guess. Do whatever you want. Wow, so like the entirety of Eclipse basically was like being paid. That must have been so expensive. So big. <laughs> the mercenary company still retains an office on Sobek's moon's Hecate out of nostalgia as much as a business strategy. <laughs> nice, because Eclipse is usually reviled for their cutthroat tactics, but they were painted as heroes for rescuing the slaves. I were stuck on the moons of this planet who did not have sufficient mass effect field protection and had se a severe bone loss. And they could not leave the planet because of that. For nostalgia. That's funny. It is kind of funny though. Eclipse is like, yeah, I remember that one time we did a good thing. Holy crap, what is with the system in like garnering massive gas giants? This is the blood plaque, blood packs training ground. Forcha and tra Forcha training and breeding ground. So we have like a Krogan outpost here, and we had like a Hanar one, and like a Borgia one. Oh, look, there's another one down here. Eagle Nebula is huge. <laughs> there's one planet out here, and it says, uh, it was chartered by a slavery mining expedition that went off course due to computer error. <laughs> it's a hydrogen emulating gas train with 11 known moons and dusty rigs. That's it. That's all. Have fun. Thanks for stopping by. Well, let's go investigate the shipwreck. There's kind of there's more planets to land on than I thought. I wish there was kind of one in every at least one in every system though. I'm so excited for Mass Effect Andromeda. Hopefully it's like the Mass Effect One again, except with more explorable planets, prettier planets to explore with more stuff on them. Oh, 
holy crap. I kind of spaced out there for a second. the shuttle VI? Where is Edie? Holy crap, there's like stuff everywhere. Oh my gosh. Is this human or not? I don't know. I can't. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, VI locked out by executive command. What crap? Who did that? VI locked out. What, what happened? What did the VI do? Shield status is normal. Uh. Okay. Okay. Aw. Damaged mech parts. Oh, look at all this money. Look at that, though! What is this? Like, is that like an Aurora Borealis effect? It's coming out of the ground, though! This is pretty cool! Alright, I think the main wreck is gonna be over here. I don't know if we can go up there. What was that? I feel like we're gonna get attacked, but... Because who knows what caused... If evacuation order. Who knows what caused the... I mean, there's debris everywhere. Like, all the cargo everywhere. Like, they jettisoned it, maybe, on the way down. Attention all hands. We are on a collision course and losing systems fast. Report to the escape pods immediately. This is not a drill. Shipping manifest as well. Nope, Shepard, I was trying to get the med kit, but... I haven't seen any people. And are they in the pods, maybe? Are they in some pods? Reflexive mech armor. Uh, ERCS facility. On a KDAR experimental mech. Hmm. Signal transmitter. Power cells, security report. Trenton, we've got a problem in the cargo bay. Marcus says the mechs in the containers are activating and self-destructing. Go check it out. Excuse me? Excuse me? That doesn't just seem like something you're like all casual about. Like there are mechs blowing up in the dang nab freaking hold. Like, you better be, uh, like, running down there yourself. And or, like, having a little bit more, you know, like, hey, take a squad with you and, like, some gear or something. I'm just curious what, if there's anything over here. I don't know if the SOS is, like, I, oh, I think those are, those are the escape pods. Okay. Can we go up here? We can. For sooth. Navigator log. Oh, okay. Hey, look at that. Captain, short range sensors just went offline and I'm locked out of helm control. The VI is reporting malfunctions all over the ship. Oh, uh, that's no good. Like, legit. Like, what the heck happened here? Mechs don't. I mean, mechs don't have. Like capabilities to like overrun a ship, you know? I mean, they can blow a ship up, but they don't have like VI where they're like taking over, you know? Or AI, really, I guess you could say. This is pretty cool again, though. I wonder what's causing this. That's really cool. I wonder if it was there, or if... Was this always like this, or was this, um... Caused by the 
crash. And this looks like this looks like the distress beacon itself, but I mean, sort of, you know. But it looks like a very important part of a, of a ship. And there's the freaking yeah, there's the freaking turbine things. And yeah, Shepard knows about ships. Leadership school teaches you all about how to run a ship. Well, you darn well better have some proficiency in it, but. You, I feel like you should probably know everything and be at least proficient, if not master, all parts of uh, running a ship. But that's just me. Multiple hostiles powering. What? Recommend immediate extraction. Well, oh, freaky! Where? Oh god! Oh, that's terrifying. Escape! Do I? Have to, why are they walking like zombies? Why do they have armor and not shields? Can we just run? Or do we have to beat them? A bunch of Sarah. Yeah, right there? Whoa, I did not mean to read that. I'm trying to run, actually. <laughs>
just went the whole time. Found no survivors. I wonder if there were any. I didn't see any. I mean, it seems like those escape pods don't have a very high rate of safety. You know what I mean? They just, like, people die in them a lot. Or they just didn't get to them in time. Or they crashed with the ship, because if the ship was completely malfunctioning, were there, were there mechs doing it? Like, that seems a bit odd. Hmm. That just seems a bit odd. That whole thing. Uh, where? Oh. Investigate what? There was something. I thought the 95% was because of. Oh, look at this. Investigate abandoned station. What did, did I just do that? I don't remember. What? Oh, this was from the. Uh, hold on. Um, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Strange alien sounds, I remember. Let's see if we got how many you received a oh, new message at your private really? terminal. Oh hey. Location coordinates from Edie. Data mining confirms the last report of Corsega, blah blah blah. Mmm, okay. Cause I recognize I recognize the name Jar Hey, because it was part of the shipping manifest. So they came from Jarahe and they were going to the other thing. Alright, that makes sense. Let's go check that out. Ooh. Uh, Alright. Are there geth in here? Did the geth do something? The heretics, I suppose. We should call them. Since your average geth doesn't really want to deal with any of that. Well, if that's the case, we are definitely bringing Legion. My shepherd tends to take out the calm people. She did take out Grunt a lot initially, but... That was kind of almost because he was useful and because he was like for laughs. Like I don't know. It was just like it's also nice to have somebody who will like lighten the mood, even very even if it can be very unintentional, you know. So I always like to have. I like, I like to try to have that balance. But when it when it comes down to like taking like Samari and Thane or Thane and Legion or something, then the Shepherd becomes the one who has to like crack a joke or something, you know. Checking it out though. With our lights. Oh wow, it's been completely breached, I think. Yeah, I knew Oh, I was like, I knew it was good! <laughs> it was my cat. Whoa. <gasps> hey, there's the Normandy! Hi! <laughs> oh, this is cool. I do like that instead of um we can't get back out. <laughs> we can't get back out! I do like that instead of having little text boxes pop up, it actually kind of shows you, like, you know, oh, this is you getting in and out. Like, I like that. It means they had some extra time to polish the story, polish the game. Dr. Gowan, in my suggestion, we've cut all power, all systems save, take critical life support in hopes that the saving systems will deny the AI the resources she needs to kill us! With a temporary solution, we cannot last this out on our own. Well, if it was a VI. Oh, she probably got a hold of the mechs. I was like, it was a VI. She couldn't have shot everyone, but. Beautiful view. I wonder. Th is this the research facility or. Should have brought the arc reactor. Jeez. Oh. Well, someone tried. 
Docking area power restored. Hey, VI, I hear you. Intruders are requested to report to the cargo doors for immediate removal from station. Sure thing, darling. As soon as I figure out what you've done and why. Unless somebody reprogrammed you, but it sounded like she may have gone AI. I don't know. Okay, I don't think VI is. Intruder detected. You are not authorized to be in this area. VI yeah, is paranoid about the possibility of infection. Its current homicidal behavior is likely out of an inflated desire to keep us from shutting it down. I believe that VI is malfunctioning and that it believes our equipment to be affected by a virus. If we continue to try to shut her down, she will keep trying to destroy us. Maybe our only recourse is just to do nothing and convince her we are not a threat. That's, you would hope, right? That's usually like the Paragon option quote, you know, where it's just like, you know, it's okay, calm down, we're not a threat, but it does not always work that way. Interesting, so she is she using her... VIs, or is she using her mechs as a, uh, I can hear them. Oh, is she in there? I think she's in there, technically. Mainframe is locked now. I think she's using them as white, as, like, white blood cells. The, the mechs. What's this? Engineering. Research lab. Docking bay. The living quarter. Let's go to the living quarters first. Explanation of mech powers from the Hane Kidder facility. Haskins Titan Nebula, which we don't have. Make sure the VI knows to accept a docking request from the freighter. Hmm. That would be interesting. Kind of a thing to, like, have to make sure, like, to, 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 like, moderate the VI itself. It can't just do everything. Wow, like, she utterly destroyed this place. I don't know, I just feel like I'm seeing more... You are- I'm in the medical bay. And there's a mess hall... Okay. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. Medical bay, haha. <laughs> oh. Living area power restored. Mm. The living area doors have been closed to quarantine a threat to this station. Advise intruders to engage self-destruct procedures to avoid death by starvation. Gee, thanks. Station control, station control, station... Ah, okay, I see. Hmm. Well, I want to get into there, too. So... One door enabled. Nope. One door enabled. One door enabled. Okay. Three doors enabled. One door enabled. Three doors enabled. All doors disabled. Three doors enabled. All doors disabled. Two doors enabled. All doors disabled. Two doors enabled. All doors disabled. Two doors enabled. Five doors enabled. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That was pure luck. I have no idea. I was just pressing buttons. I knew that if I changed it up, that it would... Work. You have been identified as a hostile intruder. Yeah? What is it? What set you off? Did you get reprogrammed, or... Did your self-protection protocols or something kick in, and... You... It's inter... I mean, it's... It'd have to be incredibly difficult. To like make it so that a VI wasn't like it could like rework its programming or like re understand its basic All intruders core program. Violating quarantine are requested to exit the station immediately. I would, but you've locked the doors. Can I read? Yeah. 
docking bay, research lab, engineering. Let's go to the research lab first. What's freaking me out is that we have not run into anybody. Whoa. Who are they researching? to be honest. V.I. female voiced one. Pretty sure it's female voiced one. A on the Plasma moon. venting in progress. Attempting to reach the maintenance controls will most likely result in serious injury or death. Oh boy. Hospital of a shot after the Corsica dock with us. Palestine's looking into the V.I. itself. In the meantime, I need you to get through the logs and find out everything that was on the ship. Okay. They, so they brought something to it from something. The, the ship brought something that messed with the thing. I'm sorry, but I'm not waking you up until I know what we're all going to get through. so terrifying to try and run through here and make it out alive and then not I don't know all attempts to decontaminate station have failed require more power to escalate defenses she thought there was a decontamination well someone's dead right there so I'm expecting a vent area power restored. She's like forced to say it. Do you not have, have any more mechs? I feel like I can hear This is a secure zone. Please leave this station immediately. If, if I don't fight anything, this would be one of several where I haven't fought anything. Hub area power restored. Central mainframe access granted. Docked vessel detected. A 
attempting to upload central programming into docked vessel's mainframe. Yeah. Sorry, can't do that. Intruder detected. You are not authorized to be in this area. Interesting. This is a secure zone. Please leave this station immediately. I regret to inform you that all attempts to defend the station have failed. Shutting down security protocols. I've never done before. That's very interesting. And like nothing else, like I don't know, like you almost get kind of a glimpse that like, I don't know, I saw my shepherd as like, you could maybe see her like walking off like, hey, I got you, but like you could, I see her as like walking off almost with like a sort of regret. Like this, this, this VI was just trying to survive. And it was trying to, it was trying to keep the station Alive, sort of. I, I feel like it's so, so. Something happened to it. Something happened to the VI where its its uh, core programming was like used against it, or it was, or a virus was introduced, or maybe the VI actually did get a bit of a personality. I mean, the VIs do kind of, I mean, they do kind of get personalities. Maybe it's just AIs, but maybe in her research facility she learned sort of learn to fear infections. Viral infections. Especially in a mech facility. She would fear a virus more than anything else, maybe. But she doesn't, she can't have fear, you know? But it's like, she somehow got some sort of AI because she was, it was self-preservation. And, you know, if, if she's coded for that, it, it's that's that's one thing too, but it's Commander, the same you've received a new message at your private I don't know. That, that's very interesting, and I feel like it's almost like it could be addressed more. But it also kind of lets you draw your own conclusions and how sh how your shepherd would react or whatever from ED. Plan information: Capec Haskin System Titan Nebula. Data from the quarantine VI at Jarhai Station indicates that a possible source of the VI virus outbreak is a Hane Cater facility on the planet Capec. All right, interesting. I am intrigued. Pretty sure this is also, um... A new system. Fuel reserves at 50%. Interesting, just flying around. Yeah, Titan Nebula, it's brand new. Alright. Where are you at? I, is it? No. Is it? It is. Okay. It's another one on the. Wow, it's another. Wow, we're getting like a nice little circle. I guess we are supposed to be operating in the Terminus systems. Titan Nebula. Interesting. Oh, so this is it, the red line around means that this is the only system in the area where. Oh, it's just the Mass Effect relay and the planet and the star. 